Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Dark Souls video walkthrough. You'll notice there's been a little transition from this and the previous video. And I've done that to save your guys time because I don't want to show you every single time I run around an area we've already been through. It just, it makes it more difficult for you to get what you need. And if you want to see those moments, for whatever reason, I do have a playthrough of this game, a live playthrough in fact, where you're going to see me do pretty much every single journey to every single location. The only thing I've taken out is the farming, because the farming is boring. And uh, I'm probably going to link that video occasionally, or those videos I should say. Because in a lot of the boss strategies on this playthrough, uh, I took a brute force at, uh, approach. I ran at them on my own and took them out because I knew the boss as well. And sometimes for a new player that can be a very daunting premise. So I will link to the playthrough for some bosses where I summoned help. Because in the guide, I have actually said, you can summon so-and-so here or so-and-so there, and I didn't do it. And if you want to know what, how that works out, or how more useful it is, you can always watch the playthrough. And uh, we both win through that means. But, uh, I'm going to be going to the lower Berg shortcut, apparently. Which is something I didn't know about until I watched somebody's video. I think his name is Vegeta311. He did an expert shortcut guide, and because I was interested in knowing some of these advanced shortcuts, I watched it and it kind of blew my mind with some of them. Uh, some of them, though, are so finicky to do, they're not worth doing. And uh, some of them aren't, and this this one, actually, I don't think I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be opening up the shortcut to the Firelink Shrine. I, I've confused this section a little bit, so just... Uh, don't ignore what I said because that video is well worth watching if you want to know some some advanced level techniques of getting around to places much quicker like this there's, there's one for the painted world which will completely change the way you play that level because it's amazing and there's one for Duke's archive that I've tried a couple of times but because I'm impatient and I don't like having to go back through that area I've not been able to successfully do it but watching people do it it is ridiculously good. Like for speedrunners, if you get good at that shortcut, you're gonna cut off two to three hours depending on I mean not two to three hours, but you know, maybe a full hour of going through that place, thirty minutes at least. But this is the, the lower berg, and these are the dogs. The dogs are extremely annoying because they get away after they've attacked you, so the blocking and attacking them is not the best strategy. You'll notice I'm trying to cheese these doorways. If you push too far down this street, these doors open and you get attacked by a bunch of these thieves. And if you do what I'm doing, you'll only have to kill one of them in this first area, because you can cheese them through the wall. And I tried to do it to that one, but uh, I'm not too sure what happened there. My guy, it almost seemed like he came. <laughs> he got so excited with his slash, he was so proud of himself that he ejaculated, and uh, it didn't work. But we're coming down here because I want to show the people who don't have the pyromancy glow for whatever reason uh, a way to get to the person who has it and who can give it them. And this area is actually completely skippable if you choose the master key from the start because you can use the shortcut down Blight Town and you never have to even mess around in this part. You don't have to play with the Capra Demon, a boss that a lot of people hate, uh, a boss that on this playthrough in fact killed me and stunned me actually because I got trapped up on the rafters by the dogs and I couldn't physically roll, I couldn't get off the rafters so the dogs were just weakening my shield and my stability and then eventually they got through it and they killed me because there was nothing I could do, I couldn't move, I couldn't heal, I couldn't do anything, it was stupid. And it's never happened to me before, I'm not too sure what, what went off but it was weird. And uh, this bit here, if you push forward, get everybody to spawn and then immediately run back, you can get them as they're running towards you. Because this is a, a strategy that works both in player versus environment and player versus player. When somebody's chasing you, they are a lot more vulnerable to damage than they normally would because usually they're chasing you because they think they've got the kill, they think they're very close to beating you. And they will sprint full brunt at you to try and get that finishing blow. And you can use this to your advantage to do a cheeky move and hit them. And it's more difficult against a human, but against a computer it's very easy to do. You can just lure people into into their doom. It's very powerful. But the fog door you've just seen is the Capra Demon. And as I've said, he is an optional fight. 
if you don't want to come down here but the depths are pretty useful for a new player because it's kind of an intermediary area between Quelag, the Gargoyles and Sense Fortress because its difficulty is, is challenging at first but in the grand scheme of things it's not much harder than the Berg once you know what you're doing but it's all about knowing what you're doing and that door I've just passed is the door that leads down into the depths but to get that key you have to kill the Capra Demon so what I would advise first is you go this way and you open up the shortcut from the Firelink Shrine so you can run directly from the Firelink Shrine bonfire all the way back to the depths or all the way back to the lower undead berg so that you don't have to you know get too frustrated against the Capra Demon uh, that ugly looking person just there is a merchant it sells humanity, it sells curing for the curse, which is a purging stone. It sells pretty much all of the the grass items, the, the moss, sorry. It also sells homeward bones, which is pretty useful, transient curses, which are extremely expensive, and poison arrows. And there's a lot of strategies that employ poison arrows that players, for some reason, rely on, and I don't really get that. Like the archers in Anor Londo. The archers in Anor Londo, if you've never played this game and this is your first experience just listening to my videos and playing along yourself, that bit is going to really, really frustrate you. It's it's going to be one of the most hated parts of your playthrough. Or, you're going to get past it without dying once and not know what the fuss is about. That is the two outcomes of that situation. And what people have decided to do, because it's creative, but it's, it's it takes too long and I don't understand how anybody has the patience to do it. You can actually shoot both the archers with poison arrows and poison them to death and just wait, wait them out. And I've actually invaded people who have had phantoms with them who have been poisoning the, the archers and waiting them out. And that to me is ridiculous because when there's two of you, you can both go for each of the archers and sort them out. But, I mean, if you're not good at the game, and chances are if you're playing the game with a phantom or you're relying on phantoms, you're not going to get better at the game because you don't need to. You just get this person in who's got a better weapon than you, better equipment, and he just goes full brunt and kills everything for you. And that is why I don't believe that this is a co-op game. And a lot of the threads on, you know, some of the sites I visit that have got bitching threads about how invasions ruin co-op when technically from software didn't intend for you to get your buddies to come along and help you beat the game they intended for you to interact in a, a an almost pioneering innovative way with other players across the world in a unique environment it wasn't put into the game to break it it's just people have found ways to do exactly that because you know that's what we do that's how we function we break things and co-op is fine but there is a realization that when you try to do it, you are in human form and you are going to attract invaders because it's just the nature of the game. And the only way you can avoid this is to literally co-op in a place that's not frequented that often by invaders. Like, I did the Painted World at level 50-something with a friend of mine and he didn't get invaded once. We did the entire thing. No invasions. In fact, we got the NPC invasion because there was no invasions. So it's all about... it's all relative, really. And co-op, I don't know, co-op just, it's fun and I like it. I just think people use it too much and they substitute getting better at the game for playing with somebody better than themselves. And it's a shame because I've got a friend who's currently in this mode right now where he's realising how much he's improving just by playing the game. His first time through Undead Berg, he was getting his ass handed to him, he was dying, and now he can go through it without getting hit, he can go through it, you know, really comfortably, he's got his own system worked out, and he can't believe how easy it seems now, because he's done that, he's done the hard work, and there are so many people that will do anything to get away from doing any kind of hard work, and I, I don't really understand it, <laughs> but... I'm not here to judge, I'm here to try and help, and we're going for the gargoyles. That guy right there, if you have a bow or any kind of sorcery, you can cheese him like I just did. The reason I do it the way I did is he can buff these enemies and there's a lot of them. And they don't look like much, but when you've got ten of them punching you, you're going to have a bad time. So, you want to be real careful, lure them out one at a time, uh, try and get some multi-kills with your swings if you've got a large weapon like I do. If you've got pyromancies and you've got any kind of fireball, just toss a fireball at them. 
they'll all run into it, it's really effective. And then I'm just going to probably do some looting. I may go and kill Lawtrek. We'll soon find out. Yep, I'm going to go play with Lawtrek. So down here is a secret corridor that leads to uh, a prison cell that's got an NPC in it. And anybody who's played Demon Souls will realise that this guy extremely quickly resembles a character off of that game. And he, re he resembles a guy called uh, Yurt the Silent Chief. And he was somebody who was trapped in the Tower of Latria. And he was trapped in the Tower of Latria for a reason, and that's because he's not a very nice person. But you don't know that at the time. And this guy is the exact same. You rescue him, it looks like a badass, it looks cool as hell, and you think, oh, he's going to help me out. But eventually, he kills the fire uh, keeper at the Firelink Shrine. So he effectively ruins your best bonfire. So I kill him because... He drops one of the best rings on the game, and he's a pretty fun fight. He dual wields, he uses a, a, a shuttle which will go through your shield if you're not careful, so don't rely on blocking, and he will parry you a lot if you're, if you're careless. But he's also susceptible for being parried himself. And with the Hornet Ring, I get the special animation, and I do massive damage. So as you can see, uh, I hit him with a two-hander to start the fight to aggro the enemy and then I finish him with the Hornet Ring which for anybody that doesn't know it's the ring I picked up at Sif's grave there's a way to get it before you fight Sif so be careful in that room and it boosts the damage of criticals when you do reposts or backstabs but I take a quick chug on my flask and this is not the Seraphim 17 drinking game so you don't have to worry and then we're going to climb up these ladders and fight the gargoyles and anybody who's uh, a fan of my channel will have already seen this fight that's about to happen it does not go well for the gargoyles <laughs> and over here you'll see me point down is where the summon sign for Solaire will be so if you're in human form and you need help come up here summon Solaire come through and you and him can gangbang the gargoyles because he does some real damage to them and he's a bit of a tank but this is a pretty revered fight because when you get this first gargoyle's life down to a quarter the second gargoyle spawns and when there's two gargoyles this fight can be really difficult but if you have a, a really powerful weapon like I do or if you use the light, the gold pine resin on a strong weapon uh, for instance if you've leveled up a Yuchi Gartana or anything like that uh, you can do some massive damage against the gargoyles as well if you've leveled up your pyromancy flame that'll do ridiculous damage too and all you want to do bait the attack evade with the roll and then attack them uh, don't get too greedy with your stamina only attack once or twice and then move uh, if you're using a particularly heavy weapon or a really high damage weapon then you, you can sometimes break the poise like i did so you know you can get some free hits but Unless you're using a Black Knight weapon, I would not rely on that strategy of breaking their poise. And I will leave a link in this video showing you uh, a fight where I use a, a standard weapon that's not as strong as the Drake Sword, but I put a buff on it that gives lightning damage, and the Gargoyles hate lightning, so it's a really, really powerful way to beat them. But thanks for watching, and you take care now.